I'm really excited to start mock draft 4.0 here. We're going to be selecting as the Chiefs, obviously. Uh, we're going to do the 2021 draft, all seven rounds pre-draft. Once again, there's no comp picks in here. Um, I know some people have a problem with that. Some people say they want to see more picks. Some people trade back to get to reflect the number of picks they think the Chiefs will have. That's fine. We're not probably going to trade back in, in these mock drafts um, because Brett Veach doesn't trade back and you've got to find a right suitor to trade back. And I just don't see anybody, to me personally, wanting to trade to 31 because I think we, I mean, Connor and I talked about this on the podcast. I don't think anyone from 25 to 40, there's anyone you want to really trade up for because anyone can fall in that range. Um, so I think that that'll be interesting there. We're going to be doing this on normal speed, realistic, strict. Let's go ahead. I forgot to name this one, but this is going to be RTK mock draft 4.0. Uh, I'll just type in 4.0 here because I apparently did forgot to type in the name. So Jordan, I'm curious to get your point of view as I, as I start the draft here, we heard from Brett Veach on, what was that Monday? And he mm -hmm. talked about how Eric Fisher is anticipated to be back. What do you think about that? And what do you think it affects the chiefs draft strategy at one? Um, what I think will happen or what I think should happen. Well, let's say both. Okay. Um, I think they're actually going to be the same. And I mm. kind of bounce back and forth on that. I don't think that should change their draft plan. I'm not entirely sure that will change their draft plan. He mentioned having that um, kind of mix, that blend of young talent and veteran talent. The thing with me is two things. A, it's not like they're coming off minor injuries and they haven't had a lot of time to rest or whatever. B, it's not like they're under contract for a very long time. And C, I guess I need to add another one. It's not like they're under 30 years old. Like they are yeah. older players. They are coming off significant injuries and or surgeries for both of them. And their contracts are running out soon. Like it's not like the Chiefs have their future invested in the offensive line right now. They don't know how long Mitchell Schwartz wants to keep playing. If he can keep playing, that sure isn't a foregone conclusion right now. Um, so I think with that first pick, the Chiefs still have to strongly consider offensive line, and um, hopefully we can kind of hammer out something in this first pick of the draft. I totally agree with you, and I one of the points that I brought up was where's the depth, <laughs> right? Uh, because you look at this team, this offensive line's got a lot of free agents on it, uh, six or seven, and that was essentially all of their depth last season with with journeymen and a bunch of veterans. So I think that they need to look to retool the depth, especially in the draft, even if these guys don't play right away. I know it's not mm -hmm. fun to have your first round pick not play right away, but if he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to. He gets a year of experience. Maybe it all works out in the end in that part. But I still do think that offensive line is going to be paramount and I think should be the first round pick. And with that, let's look at how the board fell. Zavin Collins, a lot of people that we've seen – uh, take him and their RTK mocks went mm -hmm. at 30 to the Buffalo Bills. Jalen Mayfield at 29 to the Green Bay Packers. Rondell Moore went to the Saints at number 28. Mm -hmm. Interesting there. Um, Wyatt Davis at 27 to the Ravens. Let's see, Kadarius Tony to the Browns at 26. Samuel Cosme at 25 to the Jags. Christian Barrymore to the Steelers at 24. Jalen Phillips, 23 to the Jets. Rashad Bateman at 21. Jordan, I know we've had this conversation last week, too. He, he's slipping again. Uh, he could be in that range for the Chiefs. Maybe if they wanted to, if they really, 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 really liked Rashad Bateman, they could trade up for him and get him, because I think he's about in that right range now. I'd be so happy with that. And I mentioned that I was hoping we would hammer out offensive line in our draft. Now, <laughs> if a guy like Rashad Bateman were there, I would say, screw it, just kind of go with that. Yeah. It's A, a need, and B, the best player available. Because Veach also said, don't expect them to go out in that first week of free agency and go after a wide receiver. So um, I guess we should start by looking at the offensive line board and work our way out from there. Yeah, speaking of a couple offensive linemen, Elijah Vera Tucker went at 14. So when you see oh, PFF mock drafts man. with AVT falling all the way to 31, just know that's probably not going to happen. Um AVT going at 14 is probably a good spot for him. I think he's a top 20 player in this whole draft. Yep. Christian Darius saw same thing. He went at 13 just before to the Chargers mm -hmm. nonetheless. And that's just a scary pick for the if you're a Chiefs fan to, for them to take uh, Darius because I think Darius is an absolute stud. Let's look at the tackle board, though. Tevin Jenkins, who both you and I like, is their um, Oklahoma State product. I think he's from Topeka, too. So he's a mm -hmm. local kid. Um, I think he could fit well in the system. And the Chiefs did uh, – or not the Chiefs did. I, um 
it was Matt Miller had an interview with him and he said Casey barbecue was uh, better yep. than Texas barbecue, which, duh. But anyway, uh, Jenkins is there. Leatherwood is there. Eichenberg is there. I can bring from Notre Dame. Leatherwood from Alabama. Let's look at the interior board. Creed Humphrey is a guy that has been talked about a lot. Some people don't like him. Some people are high on him. Uh, he's uh, also Landon Dickerson is there. Trey Smith from Tennessee and Dickerson is from Alabama. Any of those guys right there, Jordan, that make you say, okay, stop it. Stop the phones and let's go ahead and go with this guy. I think Landon Dickerson is a guy. Um, where is he ranked on that board? Well, it's interesting you mentioned that. His his ranking has slipped all the way down to 50 in, in, in this. Mm. And it's possible that he's there at 63, but I don't think it's a given. Because uh, mm-hmm. uh, I think that his talent is very good and he is slipping. I think we've had several people tag us in different articles on Twitter about how Landon Dickerson's sliding down the offensive line just overall uh, board and what people think. And it's because of his medicals. I get it. I mean, four season ending injuries and in five college seasons isn't a glistening report, right? <laughs> um, but when Landon Dickerson's healthy, man, he's an absolute stud. I mean, he won the award for the best center in the country last season. Uh, you can't argue with that. I think Landon Dickerson is one of those guys where I, I could I could see going 31-4, but I could also see a lot of people being upset with going for 31 mm-hmm. with a guy with such with such a checkered uh, injury history. Yeah, I think so too. And then Leatherwood and Jenkins are both guys that I'd be just fine with taking yeah. at 31. Um, let's take a quick look at the edge board, and then we'll have to decide between those three. And number uh, 35, this is what he's ranked, is Joseph Asai um, Mm. is sitting there. I know that both you and I have talked about Asai before, a little bit undersized, if I can remember Mm -hmm. correctly, off the top of my head. Jason Owe is there. So is Carlos Basham. Joe Tryon also there. Um, Mm -hmm. Owe is at 37, is what the the NFL mock draft database has him rated at. Uh, Boogie, uh, Carlos Basham is at 42. Joe Tryon rated at 54 Patrick Jones rated all the way down at 65. So maybe he could be a round two snag. Wow. I did not expect, I don't remember what his ranking. Will you click on it and look at the little chart and tell me what it's uh, looking like? Um, Let me see what I can do here. It can't do that from the simulator. I don't think Um, Uh, Look at the, at the ratings adjustment. Yeah. But um, that is a very cool feature on the on the NFL mock draft database. As you can see the trends of the players, um, I know that both you and I like to look at that sometimes. But I don't think that that's one that one of the features you can do from the simulator. Well, you know what I'm going to do, Tucker. Since I have my computer open and we are doing a podcast recording, I'm going to look at it my own darn self. Heck yeah, do a live look up right at, here. Yes, he has dropped. He originally was a little below forty. Now he is down Ooh. at. 65 so man i think we splash and go with landon dickerson and just let the chips fall where they may i'm all in i like that move too i really the talent of landon dickerson is something that is really hard for me to shy away from him right it's Uh, undeniable uh, it really is and when he's in there he's an absolute beast getting a center early in the draft when you know you have your center up for free agency and maybe Austin Ryder does come back or you make a splash move at center uh, that mm-hmm. Connor and I talked about on yesterday's podcast. Maybe you make a move there, but having a guy for the future of that position, I think is going to be really important. So I'm down with Landon Dickerson. I know a lot of people probably won't like this pick, but let's do it. Landon Dickerson at 31 overall, an Alabama guy. We talked about this Alabama offensive line on, on last week's podcast where, Man, if you can get anyone from this offensive line that good, because that's an award-winning offensive line. Yeah, and rightfully so. I mean, they're routinely a top five, um, top one, top two program in college football every year. Nick Saban gets the best recruits. He coaches the best out of those guys. And he gets guys who will stay and work hard and then go on to be productive NFL players. And I think that Landon Dickerson's a prime example of that. And medicals with covid um, could see him sliding well into round two, but I'm just worried that he won't be there at 63 because he's mm-hmm. too good to slide that far. So I'm fine. We haven't taken him yet. So let's go ahead and go and do that in 4.0. Oh, yes. So now let's look at the pick number 63. A couple guys that we would probably think of taking here Jabril Cox just went right before us at 62 to the Packers, Afitu Melifon Wu at 60 to the Saints, Patrick Jones at 58 to. Uh, mm. The Ravens, Trey Smith, uh, 56 to the Seahawks, Dylan Redunds at 55 to the Steelers, um, Joe Tyron 
Joe Tryon, I should say, at 49 to the Cardinals. That would be salty, man. That defensive line would be so good if Joe Tryon went there, um, especially now. Creed Humphrey at 43, Boogie at 42, Eichenberg at 41, Leatherwood at 38. Okay, so now that you have a center in round one, Jordan. What are your thoughts here? Where do you go? Do you look at the tackle? Do you look at the edge? Maybe do you go linebacker? What are you thinking? I think you consider – both linebacker I mean you consider linebacker safety edge and wide receiver like those are my four that even guard if you really needed to or tackle I mean it's the Chiefs have a lot of minor holes to fill and they have a few major ones so um, I think it just depends on how that board overall looks so looking back at our past mock drafts we've taken a wide receiver two wide receivers and a safety in our, in our mock drafts. I, mm-hmm. I know that you and I have toyed with the idea of taking a linebacker in round two, um, especially now since Brett Veach talked and he said linebacker is going to be a concern moving forward. He said it's one of their, their main areas of concern, main areas that they, they want to address. Chess rats there, uh, Baron Browning, Cameron McGrone, Jamin Davis. Now we did take Pete Warner last time and Pete Warner could be a guy, you know, who's there later on in the draft that mm-hmm. you could take as a linebacker, but we'll look at the edge board. Let's see what they got. Uh, Quincy Roche from Miami, Ronnie Perkins from Oklahoma, Ham Claire Rashid Jr. from Oregon State, and Rashad Weaver um, from Pitt are there as well. Those guys, I think Rashad Weaver could probably stick around until 95. Yeah. Um, would be guy. Is there another position you want to look at? A wide receiver, maybe? Yeah, let's take a look at wide out just for fun. Yeah, well, Amonra and Tylen are both there. Amonra St. Brown mm. from USC, Tylen Wallace. Uh, from Oklahoma State, both there. Tutu Atwell, who I think is more of a slot receiver. Correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there Seth Williams? I know a lot of people in Chiefs Kingdom, Chiefs Draft Twitter are now uh, liking Seth Williams. But uh, I, I, what are your thoughts there for those wide receivers? Yeah, I don't love it. I think that they – and can we look at tackle just for fun? I want to yeah. look just for fun. You got Walker Little, Spencer Brown, mm. and Brady Christensen. Now, I think Brady Christensen could be a guy – where this would be a, a, a air quotes reach um, in yeah. terms of the ranking, but I don't think is necessarily a bad pick in, in late second round here. Yeah, I, man, I don't really love where where's Christensen rated in the on the board. One fifteen is where he's rated. Yeah. Okay, so he'll still be there in round three, which makes yeah. me feel better. And did we take him last time? Uh, I don't believe we've taken Christensen ever. So I think Christensen okay. could be a guy that we could really target in in round four would that be yeah yeah i'm gonna peg him for a later round pick and save Mm -hmm. him in our back pocket i i guess let's look at the safety board i mean none of these guys are any of them jumping out to you i don't love the board right now not really we can look at tight end too i think there could be some viable tight end options especially with brett veach's comments about tight end too wasn't okay. prompted by the way that he talked it about tight end, mm-hmm. but let's look at safety. Jevin Holland from Oregon. I don't. I don't know a whole lot about that guy. Andre Cisco mm-hmm. from Syracuse. Richie Grant and Paris Ford are both there. We've both taken previously taken Richie Grant and Paris Ford. Both you and I are very high on both of those guys. Um, I think that they're mm-hmm. good safeties. But let's take a peek at tight ends. You have Brevin Jordan there, who you just dropped a scout on Tuesday about. Yeah. Um, could really impact this Chiefs team. He's rated at sixty-seven. Uh, on this board, Hunter Long from Boston College and Tommy Trimble is Connor's guy. Uh, 141 uh, for Notre Dame. Uh, any of those guys, do you think Brevin was the move here? Do you like going tight in, in the second round, or do you think that that's more of a, a wait and see position? I mean, I'm fine with it. I think that considering the board, I mean, you'd like a more need based player. I guess um, mm-hmm. Brevin Jordan is super athletic. I think Tommy Tremble's a better fit right now with what the Chiefs want. Like if Travis Kelsey was a few years older, had a few last years on his contract, you go with a guy like Brevin Jordan. And I absolutely love his game. I think that they'd run a lot more 12 personnel sets with him on the offense, but um, his blocking is legitimate concern. I think that he is yeah. nowhere near a good blocker. Um, that's something that that tight end two needs to be able to do. I think that Tommy Tremble doesn't have that ceiling, um, but he's more well-rounded right now and still is well good enough of an athlete to make an impact. So honestly, I'm not against Tommy Tremble. Hmm. Uh, what, when you were talking, it just came into my head. What are your thoughts on Chaz? Chaz Surratt um, there at the number 63 pick. I know we've talked about 
linebacker before. I know you're not too high mm -hmm. on, on Baron Browning, but what do you think about Chaz there? I love Chaz. I think that he has an insanely high ceiling. He's a very athletic player, but he reminds me of Willie Gay last season. Mm -hmm. Like he's an athletic linebacker who between the ears needs a lot of work in order to have the game slow down for him. And I think that he is going to make an impact just because of how athletic he is, but you have to be able to stack and shed, which means you have to be able to engage with those tight ends and linemen and be able to, really have an impact in the run game and be able to disengage and line up and still be able to take cracked angles and get after the ball carrier. So he doesn't have that right now. Um, I think that he would be brought along similar to what Willie Gay was last season. We don't know what Willie Gay is going to be brought along as this season. Like we assume yeah. he's going to be taking that role alongside Anthony Hitchens with maybe a feature in nickel packages um, or in the dime sub package, whatever they want to do. I just don't know, man. I think mm -hmm. that, like, I love Chaz, and I think that he'd be an interesting pick. Um, but in terms of year one substance and ability to fill in that Damian Wilson role, he just he doesn't fit that for them. Right. I, I agree with you. I think he is a good athlete, and I think you even mentioned in your scout that it's more of a foresight pick than it would be a, yeah. a right-away pick. And with your second-round pick, that's kind of something that you want. Um, Edge, again, nothing – I mean, man, nothing is jumping off the board at me right now. Yeah. Um uh, even with, you know, Ronnie Perkins there, who, I mean, is solid. but Is Joe Tryon gone? Joe Tryon is gone, uh, sadly. Okay. Um, we looked at cornerbacks already, right? Um, nobody there yeah. that jumps off me if we didn't. Uh, defensive, interior defensive line, you got Jay Tufili, um, who I don't think would be terrible. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. I mean, interior defensive line isn't really a huge need at this no. point. Um so it's tough. I mean, wide receiver look there again. I'm, there's, I think that maybe tight end is probably the best pick between Jordan and Trimble. Um, and, and I do think that Trimble is probably the best fit right now um, mm -hmm. for the chiefs. I do agree with you. So um, I know we already talked about Brevin and Tommy, but if you had to pick one right now, which one would you pick? For the chiefs sake this season, I'd probably go Tommy. And especially if you're, you're missing out on that receiving weapon. Um, you might as well add a dynamic threat to really open up some of your offense with that second round pick. Since we're not going to take a receiver in the first two rounds, we might as well take it a tight end, I think. Well, here's here's an interesting thought here because I'm noticing he's at 141. He could be there in the third oh, round. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, he's at 141. He could be in there in the third round. But what if you go Brady Christensen here and then wait for Brady or Tremble in the third? Or you take someone else here and then you double up with them and hope that the board allows both of them to be there in rounds three and four. That's true. It, it would be really close with Trimble at 159. Um, I yeah. think that we could, I think, what are your thoughts on Walker Little? I know we haven't really talked about Walker Little a whole bunch. Guy from Stanford, yeah. offensive tackle. He's rated it, he's ranked at 80 here on the offensive tackle. Aside, he's the best available offensive tackle right now. Mm -hmm. So, who, what are your thoughts on him? He's a really good player. Um, well, at least he was the last time we saw him. He didn't play right. last season. He he has an injury history. Um, he was an All American level tackle the last time he played. Um, I just think that, and I'd kind of be a hypocrite because Landon Dickerson has an insane amount of medical concerns. But mm -hmm. I'm just not completely sold on Little yet. I think that maybe round three would be a better spot for him. Um, especially if we plan on going with Christensen later in the draft. I think that that's kind of something you can afford to pass on. So I guess you could reach for Christensen here and then tremble in the third round. I mean, it's, it's just a really risky proposition overall. Yeah, it is. And I'm going to look overall here. Jevin Holland is the best available uh, mm -hmm. overall. And then obviously, you know, looking at Kyle Trask here, but um, Andre Sisco, the safety, then Richie Grant, Brevin Jordan, Aaron Robinson, the cornerback from UCF, Jay Tufili, uh is from the interior offensive line. You haven't looked at Tufili yet, am I correct in saying that? No, I looked at him. Okay. The, well, I, I will say this. Um, this USC team has a bunch of guys that have yes. Hawaiian <laughs> and Samoan names. There's actually a couple that are related. I can't remember off the top of my head who it is. Uh, there's like three of them that are related. Uh, mm -hmm. There's two brothers and then a cousin of those brothers. So they all kind of run together in my head. I know that's probably not a good thing to say, but um, I got a lot going on up at the top of my head. So, <laughs> and this, 
this is not the best bowl that we've ever had. And I'm not in love with any of these picks, to be honest with you. Um, it, it's, this, is, this is a tough one. Do we just go with one of Christensen and uh, Tremble and just go with the reach and call it a day? Yeah, or you could go Spencer Brown. I don't know how you feel about Spencer yeah. Brown. Um, Spencer Brown is at 107. Or I do like we go him. Chaz? Or you go I mean, Chaz, man. I think it's that- a high high risk move, and you you could have an uber athletic linebacker core with Willie Gay and Chaz in a year or two. Maybe we just go with Chaz here. I think you do. I like Chaz here. The more I think about Let's it, just because- do it. Because you know this is going to be a foresight pick, right? This yeah. isn't going to be a pick that's going to play right away. And then if you think forward, they have Willie Gay and Chaz Surratt as their two linebackers when they go into the three safety sets. Come on. Let's just do it. Let's, Let's just it. go Chaz, for it. Chaz Surratt, but I did it right there. Chaz at 63 overall after a very long discussion um, over what to do. This <laughs> that was such a long been, segment. Yeah, this board has not been kind, but this is what makes it good. I think that's what makes it good is for people to hear our thought process on this and to say, okay, this is what we should do. This is what we shouldn't do. And I think linebacker there is not the worst thing you could have done. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, it's a foresight pick. I mean, you, sometimes you don't get that plug and play starter in round two, um, which we mm-hmm. might get a plug and play starter in round three if Brady Christensen's still on the board. He certainly is at 115 is what he's rated on here. I think he's better than that. I think he's. I'm ready to lock player. it in. Um, Tommy Trimble still on the board as well. So let's go ahead and just lock in Brady Christensen. That's yep. an easy conversation. Uh, then now, if we look at the picks that the Chiefs have or that we've done for the Chiefs, you've got an interior offensive lineman, you've got a linebacker, and you have a tackle. So really, a lot of the positions of need already addressed in the first three mm-hmm. rounds. Yeah, and now I think we look wide receiver here, and then we look edge, and then we look tight end if Tommy Tremble's still there. If not, then I guess we – I don't think you go tight end if Tommy Tremble isn't on the board anymore. I agree with that. And Tommy Tremble is on the board. This is a 127. Oh, man. Now, here's a, here's an argument we could make. Maybe he's there at 159. That's risking it at that point. I think that's very that's very risky. But let's look mm-hmm. at the wide receivers. Diami Brown. Amari Rodgers is a guy that's getting a lot of uh, traction as of late. Mm-hmm. I think that on uh, Brett Coleman's video, he did top five most underrated prospect. Amari Rodgers was either – I think he was number five um, because Tyreek Lipsy was four. And uh, Amari Rogers is a guy that I don't know fits into the chief system. I think he's more of a slot guy, but mm-hmm. um, it could be interesting. And then Shai Smith, I don't know a whole lot about him. Marlon Williams from UCF. Daz Newsom at 148 is what he's uh, rated at um, from North Carolina. So they got Daz and Chaz on the team. That's pretty cool. <laughs> have we taken Diami Brown already in a yeah, previous draft? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that would be kind of a slam dunk. I mean, unless we wanted to do a duplicate, but we're trying our best not to. We are we are trying our best not to do them, but I think mid round duplicates are different because um, let me see where we took Diami last time at one twenty. Well, at one twenty seven, <laughs> which would be this pick right here. Um, Let's look at the edge board just for fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that idea. Dalen Hayes is there, which we've already doubled <laughs> doubled up. Oh on. man, um, but which I think would be a good pick. Ellerson Smith is also there. Jordan Smith, who we – have we taken him? I don't I, think so. Maybe, and we haven't? Mm-mm. Not on my list here, it doesn't look like we've taken Jordan Smith. Okay, that's an crazy. interesting one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's odd. I thought for sure we would have taken him already because yeah. both you and I kind of like him. Uh, mm-hmm. But the edge board is, is fine. I think Jordan Smith would be a decent selection there. Um, what else should we look at? Defensive line, Osa's there, uh, O.D. Mm. Jizua. Um, mm-hmm. I know that he's a pretty solid guy. Oh, this is who you looked at. Uh, Talona Hufunga. This is mm-hmm. uh, he's, he's there at safety. Tyreek Ellipsy, who obviously I like because I'm a Mizzou guy. Um, I think he's a very solid uh, safety, but he can wait until later rounds if you really want a safety. Not a whole lot of cornerbacks there. Thomas Graham from Oregon, Ambry Thomas from Michigan, Trill Williams from Syracuse. So what are you thinking here, Jordan? I'm fine with Tommy Tremble, man. I think that we lock that in. Yeah. I think after looking at the board, I think this is the right way to go. So we'll go Tommy Tremble getting the number two tight end. 
Um, and we talked about that a little bit yesterday, but this is really the first time that Brett Veach and I think that the organization has admitted that they were looking for a backup tight end because usually it seems like a uh, Chiefs Kingdom was like, oh, they need a backup tight end, they need a backup tight end, but the organization never does anything about it. Mm-hmm. It seems like the first year that they're admitting it, and not only are they admitting it, but they're bringing it up on their own accord. Well, and it's hard to not do that after watching the on-field product they had out of their backup tight ends last year. I mean, I was admittedly really hype when Ricky Seals Jones was signed. I thought he was going to be a great tight end too. He was not a great tight end too. And then Nick Kaiser, um, bless his heart, just did not have the the stuff to do it. So I think that addressing that tight end two spot, I mentioned this in my breakdown of Brevin Jordan. Um, the Chiefs only ran 12 personnel, which is one running back, two tight end sets, 18% of the time in 2020. So that was... Yeah. I believe 17th in the NFL Um, and the two previous seasons, they ran at 28%. So that's a 10% disparity. It's pretty significant. Um, Not that the chiefs like Blake Bell wasn't a world beating tight end too, but I think Tommy Tremble would be the best TE two they've had um, in the Kelsey era, as long as Mahomes has been there at least. So if they can address that either via free agency or in the draft, I'd be fine with it. But um, adding in some young talent that's cheap, and comes in the mid to late rounds, I'd be perfectly fine with. I totally agree with that. And I think that uh, having a guy come in here that could be a receiving threat as well as a good blocking threat would be perfect. Um, That's what the Chiefs need, especially (laughs) once we saw the debacle at offensive line um, in the last game of the season. So let's look at 159. I'm looking at the overall board right now. Marlon Williams, wide receiver from UCF, is there. Dimitri Felton, I only bring him up because he played at a lot of wide receiver snaps in the senior bowl. Mm -hmm. Um, but then we get in the same conversation where, oh, well, Clyde is supposed to be more of a receiver yeah. than he is a running back. So I don't want to chase that rabbit. I don't want to do that at all. Um, yeah. So passing up all the running backs here, Daz Newsom is there. Jordan Smith is there. Uh, he's rated at 157. He's there at 159. So do you think we go, we go Smith here at, at edge? Because we're still needing an edge rusher. I think you can go with Jordan Smith. And, I mean, we'd be operating under the assumption that the Chiefs went out and signed hopefully an edge or brought back mm-hmm. um, not Alex Okafor, but um, Taco Charlton, which yeah. that shows my preference <laughs> between the two. Um, but Jordan Smith is a long athletic player and I hate to say it, but that's really about it right now. He has like yeah. that burst at the line of scrimmage. He doesn't use his hands very well. Um, he's more of a three, four outside linebacker, I think, but can be taught to put his hands in the dirt consistently and operate under that uh, four point stance. Um, to start off. So I think that Jordan Smith makes a pretty good, um, what are we in fifth round now? Fifth round selection. Round number five. Let's go ahead and lock it in. I was looking at the board while you were talking about Jordan Smith and there's really nothing else there. Um, So I think Jordan Smith is the best option there. So we're going to look at the last pick of this mock draft. You got to go best player available. That's what we've been talking about all season long, all draft season long. So let's see who it is. I think uh, maybe wide receiver is probably going to be the best position to go for at this point. Yeah, I think so. I mean, if it's a Josh or Bebe or Frank Darby or someone like that, then yeah. you might as well just take that um, advantage of the, the best player available. Right. And there's been a guy, too, that a lot of people have started talking about, a Simi Fecco. Um, I don't think that's how you say mm-hmm. his last name, but he's from Stanford. It's a F-E-H-O-K-O. That could be another uh, good option at mm-hmm. number 223 as well. And uh, I'm watching the board fall as fall right now. And it looks like wide receiver-wise, what we have is Wap Filer from Indiana, Frank Darby, um, who we took. Is that two weeks ago? Yeah, in our draft. Mm -hmm. Austin Watkins, a UAB wide receiver. Des Fitzpatrick from Louisville. Jonathan Adams Jr. from Arkansas State. Um, Any of those wide receivers jump off the board? Obviously, I know you're a big Frank Darby guy. Yeah, I'm a huge Frank Darby guy. I think that he is my option if we go here. I mean, and it's a duplicate, but it's a seventh-round duplicate, so I'm okay with that. Um, Let's go to the overall board just for – fun to see kind of what we're looking at in terms of literally best player available yeah so overall uh jonathan cooper is your best player available right now the Mm. edge rusher you could double up there i wouldn't actually hate that um and then you have wap filer robert rochelle from central arkansas the cornerback i think he was at the senior bowl Mm -hmm. um 
Malcolm Kuntz from Buffalo. He's the edge rusher. Then Frank Darby. Uh, then that's it. But I, I try to think Cooper could be interesting here. Yeah, I've kind of cooled on him since I initially first started watching a little bit of his tape. I I think that he's a – I just don't know if he'll make much of an impact at the next level. I think he has a, a high floor in terms of he'll make a few splash plays, but I don't know if he will ever be a consistent rotational player. Um, I think he definitely belongs on an NFL roster. I don't think that he's undraftable or will go undrafted. Um, so it's either between him and Frank Darby, and I think that the fact that – we haven't addressed wide receiver yet and um, could develop someone like Darby probably makes better sense. Yeah, I agree. And this is our only duplicate, I believe um, would be Frank Darby. And I'm okay with that being it's the pick 223. So we'll go ahead and lock in Frank Darby at 223 and that'll do it for mock draft 4.0. So let's go over our selections here. We've got Landon Dickerson at 31, Chaz Surratt at 63, Brady Christensen at 95, Tommy Trimble at 127, Jordan Smith at 159, and Frank Darby at 223. Jordan, what are your thoughts on this draft? I think that offensive line got addressed. You have a tackle who could potentially step in and play significant snaps from week one. Um, You have a a center who hopefully will eventually be able to play in his rookie season. I think that judging by his workout videos, and I hate to be that guy, um, he's looking pretty good. We'll see how the medicals shake out. Chaz Surratt has the potential to be a really good linebacker in the NFL down the road. Um, Tommy Tremble plugs that tight end two hole. Jordan Smith, you just kind of take a lottery ticket shot on him and hope that he pans out because his ceiling is higher than a lot of guys at that slot. And then Frank Darby is kind of the same way. He's a big play threat Mm -hmm. and a guy who can, um, if he can beat press in the NFL and kind of develop that short and intermediate game, I think he could be a solid player. I totally agree. I like that the offensive line is addressed uh, in this draft and especially going interior linebacker and then offensive tackle is a good combination. Then also with Tommy Trimble, who really is kind of an offensive lineman himself Mm -hmm. um, as a blocking tight end is, is is pretty solid. Um, I like addressing those positions and needs. Yeah. We don't get Frank Darby until later. Don't get an edge until later either, which uh, that's just how the board felt. When we reacted yeah. to how the board fell, and that's all you can do in these block drafts. So, Jordan, any final thoughts on this? No, man. I think that we we did a pretty good job considering the board didn't start off exactly the way we wanted it to, but yeah. that's that's the beauty of doing it differently every time. I think so, too. I think that having these different simulations is good practice uh, yeah. for for what to expect on draft night because you got to expect the unexpected, essentially. Um, Mm -hmm. that's what we did today and we read and react to what we got I think that with what the board fell we got a pretty darn good draft after it and obviously we know the Chiefs are going to have to address some things in free agency because I don't think they can address all of their needs in the draft obviously as you see in this one yeah absolutely it's it's going to be interesting to see what they do and as the offseason goes along we'll obviously change opinions and see um, what the Chiefs are able to do and man that's the the beauty um of the draft process but also the scary part about the draft (laughs) process is you don't know what these teams are going to do in free agency you don't know what they're going to do in terms of retaining their own free agents going out and getting new ones what trades are going to happen um you don't know if i personally i think brett veach is a pretty straight shooter i don't think that he throws many smoke screens but that -hmm. guy's smart he knows what he's doing so Perhaps he's going to make a move that people don't think about, but I usually take what he says at face value. And if that's the case, then I think tight end will be a point of emphasis. I think wide receiver in the draft may be a point of emphasis. Um, And I think that I wouldn't be surprised to see them take a linebacker in the first round, which I, everyone knows how we feel about that. Um, And then stuff like cornerback and safety. I think that pretty much everything is on the board for them. Um, although we have those four or five needs that we have set up. 